to Python on Hardware Time. Blanka, blanka, blanka. So, I'm going to talk about some of the things in the world of Python on Hardware, and then I have um, something that's a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's a good example of some Python stuff going on. Okay. And then um, a little bit of a success story, and then a cautionary tale that maybe we can all wow, work on Wow, I feel together. like I'm just going to like, I'm going to have a whole movie in front yeah, of me. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit like it's that. It's part of like the Marvel Comics so, CircuitPython 6.20 was released. Released, released. I know we've been doing betas and betas and betas, but we're really, we're really done. 6.2. I mean, we'll we'll do a 6.21 if necessary. Any of the bug fixes, but we are starting to work on seven. So, um, a lot of stuff happened in six. We added uh, RP2040 support. We did a lot of USB work. We added a lot more boards. A lot of graphics stuff happened. I mean, these are all the changes since. Uh, beta 4, but overall, you know, which, are, which are a lot of bug fixes, yeah. but overall, we have done a ton of work in 6, um, and we're psyched to do 7. You know, 7 is going to have um, more M7 IMX support, probably also do a little bit more RP2040 stuff, and uh, and more. So, um, thank you to all the contributors. I'm going to talk about how people are contributing in a second. Here's something that someone tweeted. They... Uh, Got their first contribution to an open source project. Accepted and merged back to the master branch. Driver bug fix for CircuitPython driver for the BNO005. Thank um, you. In every place that we release CircuitPython, we always thank all the contributors. Thank, yeah, you, so thank, you. thank you so much. Everybody, um, thank you. Everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, this, is, this is a very good, functional, healthy open source community that is publishing a lot of software and taking in lots of contributions. So thanks, everybody, for making that happen. I'm going to talk about that in a second and how... There are some good success stories in that because you always don't hear about the success stories. Um, don't forget, Open Hardware Summit is this weekend. Uh, well, it's Friday. Friday, Friday. Um, it's kind of like a weekend. Um, Early weekend. Scott's Deep Dive uh, series celebrating one year this week. Congratulations, Scott. So he's Yay. been doing these for one year. If you want to see the building of something like Circuit Python, which is going to be up to 200 boards soon, we have 196 boards. We're getting close. Over 300 libraries. If you want to see a lot of the smarts that went into this. Check out Deep Dive every single week. And there's Scott. cats. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, some, keyboards. some emergent trends we're seeing. The um, People love keyboards. Yeah. The, w with CircuitPython being able to show up as a USB drive and it being so easy to do things like a keyboard and people having more access to things like PCB design software or something like the Pico, which runs CircuitPython, or having all these um, keyboards that they've always wanted to build and being able to kind of, you know, put these together in lots of different ways. We're seeing tons and tons of keyboards. So I think with, like, all of the work that you're doing now mm. with getting more keyboard stuff into the shop, the ease of use for something like CircuitPython and then the accessibility for all of the resources to figure out how to make this and then being able to uh, do it. There's a lot of people that making it their own keyboard is going to be their very first project. It was very hard for them to do before. Now it's going to be really easy. Now hold that thought because not everyone likes things easy. What? Um, wow. But, what does but that we're mean? seeing but we're seeing more keyboards ever in the entire like for me covering for me starting hack a day covering stuff at Meg, yeah. I'm seeing more keyboard projects now that people that people who this is like one of the first projects they're doing uh, publishing and getting out there and sharing uh -huh. with others. Uh -huh. So it's kind of cool. Okay. So macro pads more. Also think because of like stream decks and stuff like that. People are people are using more than just a keyboard well, to control. Well, there's just it's like everyone's their at their computers constantly. They want to like make cool interfaces. Yeah, on them. this is the Dazzler and Game Bueno Circuit per, uh, Python to create sprite animations. Those are always neat. How to use Circuit Python with GPIO on a PC. That's an FT two thirty two thing. More macro pads. Macro pads. Macro, 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 macro pads. Um, this is an ambient, ambient temperature reactor orb. A Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, Robot. With MicroPython example, MicroPython 3D printed draw, drawing robot example, a Pico CO2 based carrier board with display, a Pi Kibo that uses Circuit Python. Keyboard, keyboards. Yeah, so. Um, Pi Matrix LEDs. Cats. This is a um, Circuit Python to produce audio with a meow bit and has the cat. Yeah. If you want to see uh, or experience the pulse of. What's going on in MicroPython? Check out the slides and all the notes from the um, Melbourne MicroPython. They've got a they've got great notes, a great yeah. community. We added, um, there's a book that just came out in French that's CircuitPython. We added that to Awesome CircuitPython. So if you check out github.com forward slash Adafruit forward slash awesome dot CircuitPython, you could see all of the resources, boards, links, news articles, and more. We keep it on GitHub. Feel free to do a pull request if you find anything. 
Um, other odds and ends, we have a video that shows you how to use uh, Feather 2040. Um, this is, someone else made it, but the new chip is out, so a lot of folks are exploring it. We have an oldie but a goodie. These are CircuitPython powered sneakers. So these are like the um, uh, the Lil Nas X. Yeah, the devil shoes. But it's like, what if you want to just use your existing shoes and like yeah. 3D print a little Adafruit logo? Don't worry, say. Nike's not going to sue you. And you don't have to get special edition one out of 666. You can just 3D print these yourself. Yeah, and uh, this is flexible PCBs with CircuitPython, and a whole. Bunch macro more. pads, macro pads, macro pads, Picos, yeah, ESP 32s, twos, and more. So, um, how I can you not love it? Yeah, um, I also wanted to mention if you want to check out the Pike, the Pico Pi quarter, this is using the Pico and making a it was just like first contact day for Star Trek. So, you could check out this Raspberry Pi Pico running Circuit Python for this L cars like interface. Um, this is kind of neat. This is a mag tag, um, Moon Crescent Marjek, so it shows the phases of the moon. And so much more. So um, I wanted to talk about uh, two things. I'll get to the contributions in open source and how to get them. But I did want to mention something. So today was like, if you're into particle physics. Um, what happened with particle physics? Okay. Yeah. So the, the muon was spun around. And the standard model, we still might need new physics. We still might have new physics. There's mm -hmm. mysterious particles out there there's mm -hmm. mysterious matter that we don't know mm -hmm. about yet mm -hmm. and that was the news today and i watched the video about this um interesting possible discovery yeah. apparently you need a little bit more for it to be official discovery it's like five yeah, five yeah. sigma then it's a discovery but basically an experiment from a long time ago showed that this wobbling particle wobbled a little bit more than maybe it should so it's probably hitting these anti-particles as it as it runs around yeah. of what they are who knows who knows and there's a particle zoo at the moment particle that zoo. that it is what it is there's okay. quantum mechanics and yeah. then there's relativity and we don't have something that works with gravity right. so this is neat sure and one of the things that i always like to figure out is what tools did they use yeah what tools did they use what tools they a million years ago i interviewed brian green a string theorist for make yeah. and i said do y'all use like instant message and it was like i don't know 10 years ago now and he's like, this is the first time someone ever asked me. I'm like, because it can't all be chalkboards. I want to know, like, what are the tools you use right, every day? Right, right. Like, like, Discord? Like, what's good? What's I'm like, do you, like, gossip about particles? Like, how does yeah. it work out? Yeah. So, anyways, um, if you watch the video, and I, I put it on our blog post about this, okay. um, it's Python. They're using Jupyter Notebooks. Yeah. This is the, there's a series of numbers that they wanted to get down to a certain amount of precision. And so if you're learning, it, it, and it's like, it, I was like, there's oh my numbers. gosh. Like there's green, and there's pink, and there's blue, and there. Yeah, but you can you can check it out on the video. Just It goes by pretty fast. Uh. But here's a Jupyter Notebook, and it's like. That's cool. It's like yeah, Python. Yeah, here it is. And this is how they're figuring out, based on the results from running this, based on the supercomputers that are popping out the numbers. I see. They're like, here's the theory, and here's what actually happened. And yeah. it's like four sigma, three sigma out, right, from... From yeah. a standard, the deviation of like what they're expecting. Yeah. So. Oh no. So the, the, the too many particles. So the good news is, um, if you're into particle physics and yeah. you're a physicist, you have a bunch of work to do because it looks like there's other mysterious things. Dark matter, dark energy, and this. So yeah. you got a lot of discovery ahead. Great. Now the thing that I was talking about before, which was how are we doing this like circuit Python thing. And the, the reason why CircuitPython, and I think Python is working out, because everyone gets to contribute. Yes. So if you are interested in physics and science, at some point someone had to learn Python, and eventually they used it to interact with this particle accelerator. Yeah. Um, it's not some like unknown language that only the particle physicists know. No, it's Python. Yeah. And so when you start doing computer science, or if you start doing electronics... I think it's really intimidating. And this was like, when we see this type of tweet, we're just like, this is great. So this is a person tweeted, um, aspiring roboticist. That's kind of cool. What's their name? I bet, I bet they're interested in robotics. Um, and their, their contribution is now part of a high profile open source project. It's merged in and it's for CircuitPython. And every single CircuitPython release, we have tons of contributors. We have our core team. That's how we ultimately even hire people and do stuff. And, we didn't seek this person out. They did it. They they found that this community was was really good and really accepting to beginners and no matter what their contribution is. 
So, I normally don't do this because I try to not only focus on the positive stuff, but all of us can collectively work on something. So this was a comment I saw, and I'm just going to summarize it. This person basically said the maker movement is lowering standards. The maker movement is making it so anyone who wants to put an LED on a bike can do it, and they're just interested in that hello world and that project, and they're not really learning anything. It's lowering standards. And I think this is one of the worst things that, maybe that wasn't their intention, but I think this is one of the worst things you can say online to someone. Yeah. That Because oh, whose standards? Yeah. What standard is this? Who came up with the standard? Yeah, and what what is about these people that are coming into this tech world that you don't yeah. like? Is there something specific about them? Like, what's wrong with them? What is it? Yeah. So, you know, some people call this gatekeeping. I remember when you were posting on AVR Freaks like 15 years ago, and it they like did... 20 years ago, but yeah. Yeah, well, okay, 15 or 20 years ago. <laughs> and and these, these engineers with 50 years of experience, they saw your name, Lady Ada, and they're like, get out of here, lady. Just get out of here. And they yeah, they were angry I wouldn't contribute to their wiki, and I said I don't like wikis, and I still don't like wikis. <laughs> but they, they didn't like the idea that you were making electronics so much easier for people, because yeah. that, meant, that meant the face of electronics was going to change. That meant different people were going to come in. Yeah. So when you all see these things about, like, standards are lower or more people are going to get in, that... I know it, it hurts, because at first I'm just like, I was angry. It's actually a little bit when people say, oh, it's a toy. Like, I, I used to hate it, but I actually love it. Whenever you hear somebody say, oh, that's a toy, um, that's when alarm bells should be going off, because that means that it's a disruptive technology. Anything that's yeah. a toy is the next generation of technology that you just don't understand yet. Yeah. So, so it's like when people are like, oh, this is a toy language, or this is like toy hardware, or like, the, you know, like... This this whole like scientific endeavor is a toy. Yeah. Um, a toy is a plaything that that is creative and fun, and that's what usually ends up being the disruptive technology that takes over from whatever is happening now. Right. Like I remember so, the Raspberry Pi was a toy. Yeah. And now it's like half of like industry uses it for single board computing. So I, I've seen this phrase used a lot, and a million years ago I wrote an article about Arduino and like how how. It won in getting so many more people to get into electronics, and anything that came along later would be Arduino-like. And so I see this phrase used. So when we all see this, let's you know celebrate the successes, continue to get pe people in, but let's make sure, because this, this grows and it becomes dangerous and cancerous, and I'll tell you why. I've seen people, and we've deleted this when they've tried to do this. Um, oh, MIT must have lowered the standards to let you in. You've heard, like, we've gotten, like, crummy emails yeah, from dudes. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, and so this is one of the things that people say and, and do. And then they're like, yeah, they did. <laughs> like, they were, like, I just totally cheated and lied and so, stole. And that, whatever makes you feel better. So, but, but this, is, this is the thing. What we want to do. I still have nightmares about my HASD paper. What, what we it wanna, never ends, you know. What we want to do is continue to do this. But uh, as bad as it, painful as I saw that on another website that said the maker movement and all and these Arduino things are lowering the standard for everyone, I knew that we're being successful. I knew the success is here because when they see that, they're seeing new people, different people from them, and it's freaking them out. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to have people like me only in engineering. And so this is it, – it, it's a good thing, and we want to move more towards this. Anyone can contribute and, and grow and do stuff. We all started out somewhere as a beginner. And if I can, I'm going to try to go back and, and see if I can have this person see my note. I'm going to say, like, d surely someone cared about you and – and wanted you to learn something when you were younger. Everyone was a beginner at one time. Yeah. So don't say it's lowering standards when we're just getting more people in. This is so. Anyways, um, one day I would I'll do a talk about like helping to build good communities. But this idea that there's standards and and some people should be allowed in and some people shouldn't is not the whole. That is not the way to 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 get to a healthy open source community that contributes. What well, you want to be is in this spot where people can see their successes and maybe this will bring them on to an entire new yeah. career. And I'm happy to see that there they, they didn't feel that there was some barrier or standard. They're just like, oh, I put the code out there, got merged in. Yay. Anyways, so that's Python on Hardware News this week. All right.